here will be another grouping of tables with a champagne fountain right there in the center. I know it's hard to visualize this now, but by Sunday it'll be just beautiful. It had better be spectacular. Well, that's what I meant by beautiful, spectacular. I'm expecting the president to attend. Of course. Now, about the cake, I want to add something to it. What's that? Birds. I want birds in the cake. Oh, you mean on the cake? Little candy birdies? No, in the cake. Real live birds. So that when my daughter cuts the first slice, dozens of beautiful white doves will fly out and flutter all over the room. Oh, that sounds dazzling. But personally, I'd be a little hesitant about eating cake that birds have flown over. That's something to think about. Mm. Uh, well, you let me know what you decide just as soon as possible. What do you think about pheasants? Much too large a bird. And from what I hear, they don't fly at all well. No, I don't mean for the cake. I mean for the entree. You mean instead of the Turnados de Boom? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I, I, I just don't think there's time between now and Sunday to get 300 pheasants and, and, and clean them. And, uh, well, besides, the cost would be enormous. Mr. Edwards, Lisa is the only daughter I have. She's the most precious thing in life to me. And her wedding is going to be as magnificent as I can make it. I don't care what it costs. But, Mrs. Harris, what about your husband? My ex-husband. He cares what it costs. But I don't care that he cares. All I care about is Lisa. By the way, where is she? Mrs. Harris, Lisa and I have been doing a lot of thinking lately. And we decided maybe it'd be better to postpone the wedding. At least until we finish school. Makes sense, doesn't it? Can I get you something from the bar, sir? Do you want something, Lisa? I'll have a sludge and fizz. And uh, I'll have a rum and coke. Are you over 21? Oh, sure. Can I see some ID? Oh. Gee, I, I, I must have left it in the car, but I'm flattered you think I look so young. A couple of ginger ales be OK? Yeah, perfect. Well, what if I tell her that we rushed into this thing and that we're just not ready to make a commitment this heavy? She'll understand that. She'll have a heart attack. Does she have a bad heart? No, but that won't stop her. Well, you know, she might not be as upset as you think. The day I was born, she called and reserved a banquet room for my wedding. When I tell her, what's the worst thing she can do? Have a nervous breakdown, then commit suicide. Maybe you'd better tell her. reception, work out the seating arrangements, and wrap all the bridesmaids' presents. Oh, Mom, I've never had so much fun in all my life. <laughs> all the shopping and the planning. May I have this dance? I don't really feel like dancing. Oh, come on, Daddy, you have to dance with the bride. Maybe later, all right? You look beautiful, baby. Thank you, Daddy. I just don't know how to thank you for all this. I'm the luckiest girl in the whole world. All right, all right. Now, just stand still. Now, now, Dolores, let me finish this dress. I keep having to take it in. Why are you losing so much weight? I can't eat when I'm so happy. Maybe that's why I'm so hungry. Car 2, Adam. Code one, what is your location? Okay, lover boy, you can go now. Would it kill you to get here in time once in a while? Don't be so jumpy. She'll be there. She'll be there. See you around. Edwards! Edwards! Glad I found you, Edwards. I've got someone here I think you should meet. Kate Radford? 
Edward Edwards, our director of catering. Nice to meet you, Miss Brown. Same here. Remember how you've been pestering me to hire an assistant for you? Well. Well what? Well, here she is. I always thought I'd be the one to choose my own assistant. Nothing personal, Miss Rathbone. I know, I know, but I'm sure she'll be wonderful. She comes from a hotel family. Her father, coincidentally, owns this hotel. Perhaps I'm not making myself clear. Oh, you made yourself clear, all right. Hey, excuse me. I really don't want to be shoved down anyone's throat. You're not being shoved down anyone's throat. Oh, wait a minute. Let the lady talk. Now, I, I know you think Mr. Saxon here wants you to hire me because my father owns the hotel. Well, that's probably true. Then you're refusing the job? No. Let's face it, nepotism works. Why don't you two uh, talk it over? I think I'd be a lot of help to you, Mr. Edwards. I think I would make a very good assistant. Yeah. What do you know about the catering business? Well, I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in nutrition. I'm afraid what we do here has very little to do with nutrition. Well, I mean, it does have... Well, look, Mr. Edwards, all I'm really asking for is two weeks. After that, if you don't think I've done a good job, then I'll quit. And there'll be no repercussions from my father. All I want is a chance, just like anyone else. Okay, no special treatment. You start at 7.30 in the morning, you don't go home till all the work is done. There'll be no personal telephone calls or long lunches during working hours. And you will please wear a dress at all times, no slang. Isn't that just a little severe, Mr. Edwards? Discipline and order are essential in the catering business. I suppose that means I can't bring my dog to work, huh? Meet me on the plaza deck in ten minutes, please. The new satellite position is right here. I've already expressed our concern to the Secretary of Defense. What was his response? He should be calling us any minute now. Excuse me, Joe Harris, there's a telephone call for you, sir. That must be him. Tell it to what? Continue on without me for a moment, gentlemen. Evelyn, how on earth did you find me? Your aide told me where you were. I could have him court-martialed for that, you know. Look, uh, look, I'm in the middle of a very important meeting. You're always in the middle of an important meeting. I can't really talk now. I just wanted to tell you I'm changing from beef to pheasant. Oh, what do you want, one of those reducing diets? I'm talking about the entree for your daughter's wedding reception. Or don't you remember your daughter's getting married? How is Lisa? Nervous as a bride, I bet, huh? She's fine. Did you find out whether the president can attend? He's supposed to let me know today. Are you still coming in tonight? Yes, yes, as far as I know. Well, have a nice rest of the meeting. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yeah, we know there's a possibility of rain, but we'll risk it. Mm -hmm. Well, just in case, we'd like to reserve the Catalina room, all right? Uh, could you hang on for a moment? Hello? Yeah, Ernie, everything's fine, except I need additional I-beams every six feet. Well, I know it'll cost, but so will having the building collapse. Get, get back to me, okay? Hello? Yeah, thanks for waiting. You're busy, I'll come back later. Okay, thanks, I'll be here all afternoon. If there's a problem, give me a call. Hope I'm not interrupting anything. <laughs> not at all. Mm. Mm. <laughs> What's up? Oh, well, I just had a fitting for my wedding gown, and the lady who's altering it, just fixed me with a pin right here. Oh. Yeah, I kept thinking of Sleeping Beauty. Or is that Snow White? Little Miss Muffet. No, honey, Little Miss Muffet was sitting on the tuffet. <laughs> Gee whiz, what is a tuffet? You know, I should know that. I teach school. Ooh, Tommy, that's a beautiful place to get married. I had a terrible thought just now. What are we going to do if it rains? I just took care of that on the telephone. Oh, Mr. Wonderful. You're all worked up, aren't you? Yeah. You got time for a quick lunch? Mm-hmm. Oh, sounds like a fabulous idea. We have an assembly at school right after lunch, so I have two whole hours. Which is why I came by. 
Did you know that you are the only person in my life who can put me back together again? Hey, do you think it means anything? What? Getting pricked in your wedding gown. <laughs> oh, did you pick up the plane tickets? No, I thought you were going to. Oh, how are we going to get to Hawaii with that plane ticket? Well, we can't. Oh, then in that case, I guess I should go pick up the tickets, huh? Unless you want to spend our honeymoon in my apartment listening to Don Ho records. Hmm? Oh, I think I'll pick up the plane tickets. <laughs> so much for lunch. Hmm. Hmm. I'll fix you a nice dinner tonight. Uh, we can't. The guys are coming in tonight, you remember? Oh, no, I forgot. Well, maybe I could do something with their wives. They are bringing their wives. How come? Well... I'm the last of the big four to get married, and they're not going to miss this opportunity to cut up and have a few laughs. <laughs> Their wives don't laugh? <laughs> you know what I mean. It's uh, the guys, you know, old time. Well, I'm sure you'll have a nice time going down memory lane. We haven't gotten together since the Lone Stranger got married. Lone Stranger? Yeah, Bill Fielding. It was the nickname he had in college. Did you have a nickname? Oh, not exactly. Oh, yes, you did. <laughs> what was it? They call me Bird Dog. Bird Dog? Mm -hmm. How'd you get something like that pinned on you? Oh, well, you know what guys are like. Mm. 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 I will see you later. Listen, um, you sure I'm not going to be in the way tonight? You never. Oh, okay. <laughs> see you later, Bird Dog. No, I said pink carnations and baby's breath, not red carnations and baby's breath. Come in. Oh, I'll be with you in just a moment. Oh, sure, please, take your time. I, I've got all day. <laughs> and I want that here by 5 o'clock tonight. Is that clear? Mr. Andrews, I'm sorry to have to call you all the time. Oh, yeah, you must have received my check in the mail then. I'm, I'm certainly glad to hear that. No, Mr. Andrews, I haven't received your check as yet. Now, this is Friday, and your daughter's wedding reception is scheduled for Sunday. Yes, well, then it's bound to be here tomorrow. I'm cutting it close, aren't I? I put that check in the mail on uh, Monday. Well, Tuesday at the latest. That's the U.S. mail service for you. You, you can't depend on anything lately. Well, anyway, you, you, you call me tomorrow right after the mail comes, all right? Mr. Andrews, I'm afraid we have ourselves a thorny little problem here. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, well, oh, oh you, you mean uh, no loot, no chicken liver? <laughs> I couldn't have put it more clearly. Well, then, you, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'll just have to stop payment on the check and bring the cash to you at the reception on Sunday. Right? Wrong. Oh? Right. Well, when is the absolute latest I can get the cash to you? Last Tuesday. Look, suppose I bring the cash to you tomorrow. I swear I will, Mr. Edwards. Mr. Andrews. I... Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Thank you. You don't know what this means to a father's heart. I'll see you tomorrow. You're a real prince of a man. You know, Mr. Andrews, in the catering business, the one sure road to success is being heartless. Which is probably why I'll never make it. I'm dead. But a good-looking girl like you gets hit on by a hundred quads a night, huh? Yeah. Now it's a hundred and one. Oh. There go, you old fan. Hey. God, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you growing, a forest? A bird dog. How the hell are you? I'm terrific. I'm great. Hey, where, where's uh, everybody else? I don't know. They'll probably be down in a minute. Sit down. Sit down. Let's have a drink. <laughs> uh, waitress. Bill, take fast. Hey, Lenny, you're looking oh, good. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> Here. Keep it. My business card. What? Read along the scene. Lenny's sporting goods. We know your game. We know your game. Oh. <laughs> business must be booming, huh? Couldn't be better. Hey, how about you? Still drilling teeth? Eh, just moved into a larger office. Tell me, is it true what they say about dentists and their cute young assistants? Well, I wouldn't know. You see, my assistant's name is Marvin. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. The last of the big four to finally take the plunge. Well, and I am a lucky guy. Jilly is a terrific lady. Yeah. She, she's coming down later, and I want you guys to meet her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait until you see the suite I got lined up for the party. Uh -huh. Padded walls. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tom and Dirk. Hey, Dirko! <laughs> Go on for a long one! <laughs> I think it's about time to go in. Oh. My dad says getting married is like a dull meal that begins with dessert. Is that true, Miss Weston? I hope not. How come you're getting married anyway? Why don't you and your boyfriend just live together? That's what my sister is doing. And is my mom mad? Well, I'm getting married because I found somebody that I think I always want to be with. And we love each other. And I guess that's what. Marriage is a tax That's another very important reason. I'm never getting married. I'm not even going to have a live-in maid. Oh, everybody, recess is over. Recess is over. Yeah, yeah. Inside, inside, and I will be in in just a moment. Okay? Chop, chop. <sighs> I know it. I wasn't sure that was you. I thought it was you. But I, I, um, I, I see you got rid of the VW bus. How you been? Have I been? Oh, I'm great. I'm just great. What are you doing here? Uh, how do I get in? Um, the gate's down there. Oh, no, but what? You're not allowed on school grounds. Well, not unless you're a parent or a teacher or a child. Let's not talk through the fence, all right? When are you finished? Nate. Uh, I'll be working really late. I have a lot of papers to grade, and um, I have to do a Christmas display for the class bulletin board. Christmas? Yeah. It's only June. Well, why wait till the last minute? Who is he? Mm -hmm. The guy you're going to marry Sunday. Oh. Uh, he's just somebody that I love a lot. Somebody who's really there for me and always will be. How did you find out about it? My mother sent me a newspaper clipping. In the margin, she wrote, You blew it, jerk. That's sweet. Would you say hello for me? I did blow it, Julie. That's why I'm here. Um, listen, Peter. Um, you know, I would really like to invite you to the wedding, but see, uh, the bride's quarter was all filled up. All right. Do your punishment number on me. I deserve it. Okay? But when you're finished, I'd like to talk to you. Look, Peter, I've got it all together now, finally. Please don't get in the way. I haven't gotten over you. We lived together for a year and a half, and then one day you suddenly jump up and say you have to go to some hilltop in India to get in touch with your inner self. And then three years later, quite by chance, I see a picture of you in Rolling Stone for opening your own record company. And I'm supposed to believe that you never stopped thinking about me. You never even wrote to me. I was out trying to make it. I'll bet you were. Hey, I made a mistake. I've grown since then. Look, it's too late. Goodbye, Peter. if it is impossible, and I tell you it is. But, Claude, we're just talking about 300 tiny little fests. Mm -hmm. With 300 little gizzards to remove? 300 breast cavities to fill with wild rice? No, no, no. It cannot be done. That's what I told her. I said there isn't a chef in the entire world that's skilled enough, that has enough heart or enough speed to handle a job like that. Noon Sunday. I told her that, too. <laughs> receptions at the Bonaventure Hotel. In fact, I want you to come as my guest. I, I want you and your wife or your girlfriend. You're all invited to the reception. <laughs> I told you a month ago, and I'm telling you again, we can't make the loan, Mr. Andrews. To be blunt, you're not a good credit risk. Your salary is low. You have no assets. You've never borrowed money before. Yeah, I know. Isn't that terrific? Well, 
Not exactly. If you've never borrowed money before, how can we know if you'll pay us back? Oh, I don't owe anybody anything. All my life, I've paid cash for everything. I'm afraid that's just not the American way. But, but you've got to help me, please, just this once. I've got to give the hotel the money tomorrow, or else they're going to cancel everything. Perhaps you can try a finance company, or maybe a bank with lower standards. There are none. No, no, I don't, I don't mean it that. I mean, I, I've tried every bank in town. And those finance companies, they're ridiculous. They want me to put my house up as collateral. Didn't mention owning a house on your application? I don't own one. That's the problem. Look, Mr. Fee, I have a wonderful idea. Now, just listen to this. I work one block away from you. What could be better security? Here's what you do. Every Friday morning on your way to work, you drop over to where I work, and you pick up a payment, and the whole thing is paid off. Isn't that a wonderful idea? I'm afraid that's a trifle casual for our purposes. But I'm sorry, Mr. Andrews. Excuse me, Mr. Fee, will you sign the slip for the night depository, please? People just leave all that money in that box out there like that every night? Of course. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some work to do. Oh, does that mean no loan, right? Look, why don't you borrow the money from some friends? Oh, that's a great idea. Could you lend me a thousand dollars just to get the ball rolling? are so slow these days. Look at this. Look, 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 look. How long can it take to peel 4,000 carrots, huh? Peel away from you. Away from you. Where is Ramon? Uh, it's a good thing you're a patient man. Oh, of course. I, uh, met your new assistant today. She seems very confident. Yeah, well, you don't have to work with her. She won't leave me alone. She follows me everywhere. I'm a caterer. I'm not a nursemaid. Well, she's only trying to learn. Yeah. At least you know where she is. Uh, Marcel, Marcel, find the cherry tomatoes, and if you can, find Ramon. Hmm. Napoleon's off. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Isn't it just amazing what Claude can do with, with fresh strawberries and, and whipped cream and, and bittersweet chocolate and chocolate That's cream? enough already. I just came by to see if there was anything else I could do before I go home. No, no. Just be in first thing in the morning. We gotta figure out a way to hang that mirrored ball for the Harris reception. I already took care of it. You did? Yep. It's all up, including the little motor thing that makes it go around. Hey, that's okay. Do you care for strawberry? Oh, oh, no, no, thanks. Oh, Alvin, I've never seen her so happy. Oh, yeah, she's very happy. Well, you're happy too, aren't you? Huh? Yes, I'm very, very happy. Can't you tell? Alvin, do you remember our wedding? I think so. That crummy little room in City Hall and the janitor mopping up all during the ceremony. He even splashed my dyed to match shoes. I wonder where the time went. I don't know either. But we, we managed to survive, didn't we? Well, surviving is one thing. And getting over it is something else. Now, I have never gotten over it. And I don't think you have either. Or you wouldn't be spending all this money on Dolores' wedding. Fi, I, I, I want to talk to you about that. Oh, 
Well, I love talking about it. Oh, honey, it's going to be just beautiful. Oh, there's the door. I, I better see who it is. Hi, Alvin. Hi. Hi, Mom. Oh, hi, James. Is the bride around? Oh, my gosh, you're not supposed to see that. Yes, of course she is. I, I'll, I'll just get her for you. If you don't mind my saying so, you don't look so hot. I don't feel so hot. Is she driving you nuts with all the wedding plans, too? Yeah, maybe that's it. Well, it's almost over. You could say that. She is special. Yeah. Well, just wait till you're married for a while. <laughs> yeah, Dirk is right. Yeah, marriage is boring. I mean, it's so boring. <laughs> the same face night after <laughs> night. Boring! Call it down. You're going to have it. Well, lower it, lower it. My wife, Marcella, you know her. Pretty soon, he's going to be an old married man, just like the rest of us. Uh, marriage is so boring. Same face night after night. Boring. Oh, I suppose it's Roman candles and fireworks for your wife every night. Well, sometimes. <laughs> he was just kidding now. Um, would you all excuse me for just a minute? Please, fellas. I guess he's got his hands held out. Oh, you bet. One more. Okay. One more. Wagrid. Hey, Barkeep. Another flagon for my men. And a big bar. All right. One two for Three for Barkeep. Three for Barkeep. What is it? I don't know. 
Um, I think I just have this thing about arrested development. No, 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 I don't, I don't think that's it. I think it's something else. Tom, I want to marry a grown-up. And I see these aging fraternity boys in there. Well, now, wait a minute. Your friends weren't exactly queens of the prom. <laughs> well, all right, take Marlene. I mean, over and above the fact that she's a phony, she's also selfish. And Joyce is pretentious and tiresome. Now, you know what I'm saying is, is cruel, but you also know it's a little bit right. And you're furious, right? Joyce happens to be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, but we're just talking about loyalty to our friends. And Marlene? She just has her own lifestyle, Tom. I well, mean... so does Jack the Ripper. That's not what I'm talking about. Now, there is something wrong, and I don't think it's got anything to do with the big four. Now, what is it? I want to go home now. I want you to go back in there and socialize. No, please, Tommy, I want to go home. Jilly, you're beginning to scare me. Now, what is it? No, you're right. Joyce is a little pretentious. I just got a great idea. Let's go to Las Vegas and get married right now. Is that supposed to be funny? No, just desperate. My passion, right? No, it's my appointment book. Oh, no. Let me see this thing. Will you look at this? 10.07 p.m. Reshuffle the seating arrangements for the 12th time. 10.40 p.m. Write a thank you note for the silver back scratcher. 11.09 p.m. Kiss James. 11.10 p.m. Do something really important. Don't be that way. Just a few more days and all this nonsense will be over. This nonsense has been going on for months now, and it's got me climbing the walls. Weddings don't just happen. I mean, it takes planning and work and... And money. When I think of what your dad is throwing away on this... This wedding happens to be very important to my parents. It's like the wedding they never had, and now they're having it. Come with me. Drinks and dinner for your own protection. Peter, that is your library card. All right, I'm not a cop. So what? Will you come with me anyway? Look, could you just leave me alone? Get out of my life. I have to talk to you. No, not now. Jilly, listen to me. I want you to postpone the wedding. Uh, are you nuts? Give me another chance. Peter, one chance per person. Those are the rules. Listen, I'm going to England in a couple of days. Will you come with me? We can fly to Paris for dinner. We can drive to Scotland. What do you say, huh? Good night, Peter. Will you think about it? Yeah, sure. Peter, how come you never joined a fraternity when you were in college? I thought it was childish. You had to say that. What did the big man say? He said, I still have a great sense of humor. Besides, it's against the company's policy to give more than a one or a two week advance. Well, how much did you ask for? Two years. <laughs> two years? I'm not kidding around. Weddings are very expensive. Listen, why don't you just tell your daughter you can't afford a big wedding? I can't afford it. I just don't have the money.
mistake. Could I ask you to put these things in my room? Oh, yes, sir. And where would I find the crystal room? Uh, second floor. Thank you very much. Thank you. didn't have a wedding this elaborate. The Queen of England didn't have a coronation this elaborate. You know, I think it would be more interesting to arrange the buffet tables in a half circle instead of just lining them up. That's ridiculous. Mrs. Harris would never go for that. Well, it would give it a different look. Listen, Kate, I have been in this business for 15 years, and I know people. Mrs. Harris is a traditional woman in a gaudy sort of way. Oh, Edward, this will never be ready on time. Well, it's coming along wonderfully, Mrs. Harris, don't you think? I don't know. My husband's arriving today, and I was hoping it would be farther along. I mean, this doesn't look like $25,000. Well, I'm sure we can explain to him how it will look. After all, if he married you, he must be a man of great vision. We're divorced. I see. As we discussed, Mrs. Harris, the ceremony will take place in that room, and the reception line will form over there. The food will be brought out and placed right on the buffet tables. It's so traditional. Couldn't we, I don't know, arrange those buffet tables in some more imaginative way? In a semicircle, perhaps? Oh, yes. Yes, that would be very nice. Very nice. Evelyn. Hello. Oh, how are you? Isn't this going to look fabulous? Yes, yes, I'm sure it will. <laughs> oh, this is Mr. Edwards and Miss Radford. Hello, General. Uh, yes? Secret Service, we'd like to make a security check of the premises. Oh, guess who's coming to the wedding? No. I'm going to be sick. <laughs> oh, the President of the United States, mm -hmm. he's really coming. I'm so excited I could scream. Uh, we'd like to keep this as quiet as possible. Of course. If you gentlemen need any help, feel free to call on me, huh? Thank you. Who'd ever think little Evelyn Harris would have the president at her wedding? You mean Lisa's wedding, don't you? What's the difference? I've got to find a better dress than the one I was going to wear. He's really coming? Mm -hmm. Oh, we can move these tables. And I think we should talk about the hors d'oeuvre again. We're, we're going to want something patriotic. Evelyn, we the really got to talk about it. Salmon is red, the cream cheese is white. We're going to need a blue. Think of something. Wait till you see the way the doves are going to fly out of that wedding cake. Now, where's the floor? Dominic? Dominic, I'm awfully sorry, dear, but I am going to have to make some Evelyn, changes. I really must talk to you. One now. second, dear. The pink is out. I'm going to need a, I want red, white, and blue. What do you have in blue? better get moving. I gotta pick up the uh, film by two o'clock. How come every time we have a stag party, I gotta get the cold cuts? Same reason I always get the girl. This time not so lean. I hope he was talking about the cold cuts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you, uh, excuse me, uh, maybe you could help me out. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm looking for a girl. Uh, uh, what's her name? Her name? I don't know. Oh. Uh, well, what does she look like? Uh, look, maybe I'm not making myself clear. What I need is uh, a girl. Huh? Yes, a girl. You said that. You know what I mean. A girl to come to a stag party. Oh, you're looking for a hooker. <laughs> yeah, 
that's uh, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I can't help you. Well, uh, maybe you could try one of those massage parlors. You see, bell captains don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Not since we got unionized and went legit. What are you? A wise guy? Mother. Lisa. Isn't it exciting to know that all this hubbub is just for you? Oh, it's for Neil, too, of course, but it's really for you. Mother, I have to speak. Dominic, I'm really going to need that blue. Everything else is red and white. Mother, can we go to the coffee shop and talk? It's really important. Dear, I haven't had a chance to even sit down for 72 hours. Now I find out the president is coming. What president? Our president, the president of the United States. I think I'm going to be sick. I know, I felt the same way. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Now, what did you want to talk to me about? Uh, nothing. It can wait. Uh, you there? Those tables are much too close. This is quite a rush, but I think we can handle it. Our minimum is $250. Enlargements and the tooled Moroccan leather wedding album are extra, of course. Of course. Let's get out of here. The cheapest we've gotten so far, and we don't have any more time to shop around. I have a great idea, honey. How about if I ask Gil Bergen to take the wedding pictures? Gil Bergen? From headquarters? The guy who takes the mug shots? Why not? He's good. Most of the rapists and murderers order the original. Get back to you. Yeah. Oh, I'm not really into Moroccan leather. Thanks. Next, we have to go to the department store, then to the forest, and then to the doors. Couldn't you do these errands without me? Come on, be a good sport. This is the fun part. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Have you rented your tux no. yet? No, no. No, I was planning to paint one on my uniform. Fine. Now we have to find the right kind of black shoes for you to wear, and then we gotta go to the florist shop to find a, a flower for your lapel, you know, like a carnation. And do you have any black socks? This is the fun part, huh? You know, I've never been to one of these places before. <laughs> I guess you probably get a lot of losers here, huh? I mean, you know, those guys that uh, couldn't score on their own. Huh? Oh yeah, we get a lot of weirdos here. So, um, what kind of massage do you want? Do you want uh, Greek, Roman, Tahitian, well, Japanese? Well, actually, I didn't come here just to get a massage. But just out of curiosity, what's the Tahitian? Well, with the Tahitian, I wear a grass skirt and use coconut oil. With a Roman, I wear a token and use olive oil. Sweetheart, didn't you look at the menu? Uh, what I really want is a girl uh, to come to a stag party. A stag party? I thought those things went out with crew cuts. No, no, they still have them. Uh, uh, I mean, what's a wedding without a stag party? I don't know. Anyway, I need a date for everybody. For the wedding? No, for the stag party. I think that's sick. It's an American tradition. You didn't see American on the menu, did you? No, but couldn't you make an exception? Sorry, no substitution. <coughs> Hi. Hello. Here I am. And this is my fiancé, Mr. Cutler. Uh, please don't touch. Uh, may I see my registry list, please? Certainly. It's filling in nicely, I might add. What list? What are you talking about? Well, you list your patterns for china, crystal, and linen, and then the appliances you need, and then people pick something off and then give it to you. I think that's disgusting. What do you mean? Oh, come on, Dolores. That's like computerized gift-giving. Of course, and it's practically eliminated duplicate wedding presents. But what if somebody wants to use a little imagination? Here at Schroeder's, we frown on that. Uh. 
What did you want to see me about, Claude? These. Well, of course, they're for the Harris wedding reception. What am I supposed to do, serve them on a stick? They're not for eating, Claude. You just stuff them live in the wedding cage. I am Claude, the chef, not Claude, the animal trainer. But Claude... No, but you stop them. I quit. I don't blame him. Claude is one of the world's finest chefs. And I agree with Mrs. Harris. He shouldn't have to be concerned with a travesty like this, unless he's paid extra. What are you talking about? Oh, you mean I didn't tell you? Mrs. Harris agreed to pay extra for the cake. Oh, that's right, Kate. Did you know we're wasting our time? Claude doesn't work here anymore. You cannot just buy and sell me as if I were a lamp at an auction. It's too bad, you know, a job like this probably would have paid an extra 300 bucks. She told me four. Really? Do I hear five? No. no. What are you working on, Alvin? Oh, uh, it's nothing, really. It's just, um, a life-saving device. It looks like it's for somebody who's choking to death. It sure is. I thought I'd probably find you here. And so you did. <laughs> well, would you care to sit down? Yes? Yeah. yeah. Did you get all squared away with the Secret Service men? Yes, they were really very nice. They even agreed to wear black tie. Well, what do you think about the decorations and everything? I thought any minute a high wire act and elephants would appear. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. I told you my opinion of the wedding when Lisa first got engaged. I think she's too young. I think Neil is too young. Matter of fact, I think I'm even too young to have a married daughter. Lisa happens to be very mature for her age. Of course, you wouldn't know about that since you were too busy to spend any time with her. Uh, bartender, another scotch, please. Double. Would, uh, would you like a drink? No, thank you. Evelyn, I guess I just can't argue with you. No, I guess you can't. We're having dinner tonight here at the hotel with Neil's parents. You know, you don't have to stay overnight here. You're welcome to stay at the house. In the guest room, of course. Of course. Uh, no, thank you. The hotel is fine. Okay. I'll see you tonight at 8. Can I have a check, please? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Did you say something? Well, I did say something. Actually, I said, boy, oh boy, oh boy. They sure do have a lot of ribbons there. What do they mean? Well, this one is for the Battle of Incheon. This was for duty in Japan. This... They mean that I've been in the Army a long time. <laughs> Very impressive. Say, you wouldn't know where I could find uh, a hooker, would you? Find a what? A hooker? But I thought you said. You, um, you might try the Ginza in Tokyo. Huh? I'm afraid I can't help you. Oh, well, it's not for me. Uh, I'm trying to find one for a stag party. They still have those? Well, good luck. Thanks. I got a number you can call. Cost you 150. 150 bucks? I should have gone for the cold cuts. I can't believe he's an hour late. Well, maybe he got held up at headquarters. Well, why didn't he call? Maybe he did. Excuse me. Is it possible somebody left a message for me? Dolores Andrews? Not since I've been here, no. Uh, James Cutler? Are you sure? No. Sorry. He didn't call. Well, I'm sure he'll be here any minute. 
I don't know, Mother. He's been very difficult lately. Do you think that you've been pushing him too hard? No. It's his wedding, too. Yeah, but that's not the only thing on his mind. He does have a job to think about, too. Yeah. Hey, come on. Let's try a new wedding ring. Excuse me, but uh, are the wedding bands ready yet? For cutlery. Here they are. But they really should both be tried on before you take them. Mine fits. Why don't you take it, and then he can pick his up later? Well, we'll be closing shortly. I, I suggest you take the both of them. But what if his doesn't fit? Find another man with the right size finger. <laughs> films cost to rent these days. <laughs> Inflation's everywhere. You should see what I paid for the call cut. 225 bucks for the night. Mm. And when I went into shock, the seedy little creep said the reason it was so expensive was the movie had a plot. Like, we need a plot. <laughs> <laughs> you got the Tootsie lined up? No, but uh, has the old heartbreaker ever let you down? Oh. Oh, oh so stiff. I have a backache. <laughs> She's ready to settle down? Um, I'm very sorry about last night, guys. I don't know what got into me. You look beautiful, Jilly. Oh, thank you. I'm all ready. Hi. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Hmm? Sort of. I have a baptism in an hour. Could we get on with this, please? Oh, well, um, I think that everybody knows what they're supposed to do. Yes, well, it never hurts to be well rehearsed. <laughs> I agree. Who the hell is that? Oh. My name's Peter Turner. I'm in the wedding, too. My part comes when the minister asks if there's anyone who objects to this marriage. I think I'll say something like, uh, Jilly, don't go through with this. I need you more than I've ever needed anyone in my life. We still love each other. I don't know how you got out here, but you better be gone when I get back. Right? He didn't dump me. It was a mutual understanding. Only I didn't understand it. <laughs> Look, Tom, maybe we should postpone the wedding. Was that what you really want? Oh, I know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, when did he come back into the picture? Yesterday. He came by school, and he's kind of been around ever since. Well, how do you feel about it? Confused. Confused? I would like to have heard outraged or, or incensed, but confused, that stinks. Tom, look, I'm trying to be honest with you. I, I'm curious. I'm curious about what he's become. He's changed. He's grown up. Grown up? He comes sweeping in here like Warren Beatty and lays some last-minute garbage on you? Oh, please. Listen, you're supposed to marry me tomorrow, and you're still hung up on him. Uh, do you think you have a monopoly on, on curiosity and restlessness? I've had those feelings about other women since I've met you, but I've never done anything about them because I'm committed to you. Stay with me and help me. 
Not this time. You gotta figure this one out all by yourself. all together. <laughs> We're just one big happy family again. Then how come I'm paying alimony? Before we go to dinner with Neil's parents tonight, there's something you ought to know. What might that be, Petey? It's about the wedding, Mom. <gasps> My goodness, I forgot to tell Neil's parents the president was attending. Well, I hope they don't mind that he'll be sitting with our side of the family. How do I break it to them so they don't go hysterical? Well, have you thought of just telling them? I'm sure they can handle it. I wonder what sort of gift he'll be sending. Probably saving bonds. Oh, oh, Evelyn. Why won't anybody listen to me? What's the matter with her? I don't know. Talk to her. After all, I am her father. Well, you're not on active duty. Evelyn, sometimes it's hard to like you. <laughs> Okay, if I come in. <laughs> hey, you want to talk about it? What is it? Something bothering you about the wedding? To tell you the truth, something bothers me. And your mother can be very headstrong at times. I hope she didn't rush you into this. Dad? Yes, sweetheart. We don't want to get married. Well, then I don't think you should. I don't know how I got into this. I guess I just wanted to get away. To go out on my own. Honey, just when do you plan to tell your mother that the wedding is off? I've been trying to tell her for the past few days, but she just won't listen. Well, you know, fathers are good for something. Will you tell her? No. But I'll be there when you tell her, and I'll try to draw some of the fire. <laughs> Car two, Adam 41. What's your location? Would you please tell me what's going on? Oh, hi, baby. A 211, I think. You were supposed to meet me at the jewelers. Where were you? Hey, I'm really sorry. I forgot. You know, it's amazing how you remember things you want to do. And now I don't even know if the ring fits. Don't worry. It fits perfectly. What's wrong? Could you get Mike to relieve me here? Drill sergeants and the Marines would be easier on me than you've been these last few weeks. It's for them, don't you know that? It's for my parents. Who do you think you're kidding? You're eating this stuff up. For your parents. Hey, how's a happy couple? Ah, oh, shut up. There was nothing wrong with being organized. You're not organized, you're militarized. Dolores, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm jealous. I mean, I feel like I got lost in the shuffle here. You know, you're right. It's not just for my parents. I am eating all this up. It's like, all of a sudden, I'm the star. It's the only time in my whole life I'll ever be in the center ring all by myself. Where am I, in the sideshow? Oh, James, you know, I didn't mean it that way. It's okay. <clears throat> you 
know what my problem is? I want to be married. I just don't want to get married. I just wanted everything to be so nice and so right. Is that such a crime? Yeah, as a matter of fact, a 243. What's that? Aggravated assault. <laughs> My parents are always a little late. Maybe after dinner we can take them up to the banquet room for a little preview. It looks just like a tiny little fairyland. What it cost that you look like Disneyland. What, dear? Nothing, nothing. Mother. Neil and I have something very difficult to tell you. Don't worry, Lisa. There are eight-month babies, even seven-month babies. I don't think we ever have to bring up the subject again. It's more serious than that. Like a six-month baby. You'll have to stay with your grandmother till I can come up with a story. That's not it. Mother, Neil and I aren't getting married. kidding they're telling the truth they are not getting married but uh, Lisa and I will always be good friends oh I'm relieved to hear that you mean we just go ahead with everything and instead of here comes the bride the band will play my buddy no Evelyn there's no need to get excited about this you knew about this? you were in on this well I was briefed Will you excuse me? Look, it's, it's not like I haven't tried talking to you. You just don't hear. Why didn't you try screaming? I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But you were so caught up in your plans that I guess I just kept hoping it would work out. What is the problem, Lisa? Neil and I have been having an affair for a year and a half now, and we're just not ready to get married. Did I tell you to have an affair? Mother, no one's blaming you. We're just bored with each other. Well, what do you think life is made up of, Lisa? Do you think it's supposed to be one long, unending high? Because if you do, you're in for a lot of trouble. Were you bored with Daddy? We never thought of it in those terms. We were brought up to expect a certain amount of boredom. No, I was never bored by him. Not for a moment. He slipped in and out of wars, in and out of my life. And I never got over being excited by him. If you're bored now, baby, I don't think you should marry Neil.
too. I had my sixth birthday party. They put a blindfold on me to play pin the tail on the donkey. And when I took it off, everybody was gone. Oh. Where are we going? I told you, that's a surprise. There you are. What's this? Well, we have here squab with the uh, mustard sauce and glazed baby carrots, potato sauce, citron, and for dessert, chocolate mousse. For me? Well, I can't possibly eat two portions. One of them is for me. What's the occasion? Well, I just thought we'd celebrate your new job. Congratulations, you're going to make a fine assistant. You sure you don't want the full two weeks? Well, I don't need them. I'm convinced. Thank you, Edward. Are you busy after dinner? Are you making a pass at me? Oh, no. I just wanted to show you how Claude is coming along with getting the birds into the cake. Oh. <laughs> Middle-aged dream. I think something's missing. There are no instructions. Hey, that bimbo you brought is eating 67 bucks worth of coal cuts. Look, honey, I know you're hungry, but because you probably do a lot of walking in your line of work, but uh, enough's enough. Hmm? The guy didn't give me the right size spool. Too much fat in his corned beef. Oh, who are you, Julia Child? I can't believe this. 225 bucks, and they didn't give me the right size spool. Lenny, relax, have the drink. Okay, let's have a little exotic dancing here, huh, sweetheart? <laughs> what about music? Uh, no sooner said than done. Music, maestro, please. You got it. Oh, this one's great. I saw it at my lodge. X-rated Mother Goose. Oh, oh wait till you see what little Jack Warner does. Okay, honey, let's do it! Nineteenth and Fulton Highway, handle code two. <laughs> Got a man with his arm stuck in a night deposit box at Fourth and Morrison. Ha! <laughs> I say, here's to the big four with a one, a two, three. What's wrong with you, Tommy? Not drinking the big four? Eric, what the hell is this? There is no more big four. That was ten years ago. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Well, what's wrong with me is that I'm 32 and, and my hair is thinning and, and I'm too old for this and so are you. Oh, well, now you're making us sound like a bunch of weirdos. No, come on, have some fun. This only happens once in a lifetime. We're trying to pump life into something that should have died in a natural death years ago. Ah, oh, you're crazy. This is fun. Hey, we're having fun. <laughs> Look at the old heartbreaker. And the grammar here. And those nicknames, I mean, they never had anything to do with any of us. I mean, you were never a heartbreaker, and I was never much of a bird dog. Jeez, I mean, th this is all for you. I mean, everything here, it's all for you. No, it's not. You guys are just trying to recapture some, some magic that just isn't there anymore, hey. not for any of us. Come on, Tom, don't leave. This is just the beginning. She's just the opening act. We got real movies. Look. You guys, good night. I'll see you on the plaza deck at 11 sharp. Hope you have better luck on your honeymoon. Tom! Hey, Tom! Look, uh... Hey, 
Tom, about what you just said in there, you're right. I mean, it has been a struggle. Yeah, it sure has. Even in college, the girls didn't dig me that much. They're all right, Dirk. It's just... I wish we could keep in touch. Maybe when I come into town sometime, just the two of us. Maybe even with the wife. I'd like that. I really would. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Tom. They were good times, weren't they? They were the best. tomorrow when they find that cat in the box. I swear to God, is all I was trying to do was fish the cat out. I suppose you're going to try and tell me that your pussycat was making a deposit when he fell in. Would I try to tell you something as crazy as that? No, no, no. The cat was chasing the mouse, and the mouse was making the deposit. Okay, fella, let's go. Wait, listen, can I use the telephone? You want to call your lawyer? No. My caterer. <laughs> Hey, Sarge. A lot of crazies out tonight, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Andrews. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Yes, I know, these things do happen, but uh, not too often, thank goodness. Yeah, well, good luck to you, and thanks a lot for letting me know. Well, that is the first time I have ever been anyone's only phone call from the slammer. <laughs> Mr. Edwards? Oh! This is Harris, General. They told us we'd find you here. I'm afraid we have some very bad news. You don't want the pheasant. The, uh... The... I can't say it. The wedding is off. Now, I'll be happy to pay for everything that we ordered. We're both very sorry. I feel like such a fool. I, I don't know what you're going to do with all that stuff. Well, don't worry about it. These things do happen. Oh, I'm glad you take that attitude. Well, uh... Have a pleasant evening. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> well, what are you smiling for? We're stuck with 300 pheasants, all dressed and no place to go. Oh, well, maybe not. I think I can find a home for them. You want to talk about it? The first time I've ever seen you when you had nothing to say. Albert, why did I push so hard? I almost ruined my daughter's life. What kind of mother am I? An imperfect one, like most mothers and <laughs> most fathers. I guess I wasn't such a great wife. Looking back, I... I know I was awfully pushy. Well, maybe you were, but I think we might have worked at it if I hadn't been on the move for the Army most of the time. Do you think if we'd been a little older when we got married, things might have been different? Maybe. Well, you can't go back, I guess. Nope. But we are older now. Just slightly. May I have this dance? Certainly, General.
How'd you know where to find me? Well, I just sort of guessed. I remembered this is where you like to come when you're troubled. Oh. Peter, why are you doing this to me? I'm supposed to get married this afternoon. Is that what you really want? Well, what if I didn't get married? What would you do? What do you want? Promises? What have you got against marriage? Nothing. Nothing. The day you want to have kids, we'll go right downtown, get the blood test, the whole number, I swear. Thank you. Last of the big romantic. You gotta admit, we've got a dynamite chemistry. Um, sex isn't all that I'm looking for. You hungry? What is it? Come and see. Come on. That's yours. Well, what is it? Strami on rye, coleslaw, Russian dressing, and a thin slice of onion. Do you remember my favorite sandwich? And look. Cream soda. <laughs> I told you I'd never forgot you. Look, if things weren't right with you and Tom, you wouldn't even be out here today. Peter. Uh, Peter, would you do me a favor? Name it. Would you kiss me? <laughs> no, I mean, would you really kiss me? With pleasure. Okay. Uh, uh, this is really important, so uh, make it a good shot. I don't have any bad shots. No. Oh, oh, damn. What are you talking about? Oh, I, I gambled and I lost. What do you mean? Well, I, I thought there wouldn't be anything. I thought that would just be a great big zilch, but it wasn't. I told you. I told you it wasn't over for us. Oh. Cancel your wedding plans. We're going to England. Why now? I have a lot of business in England. No, I mean, why me now? Why not three years ago or even it, two years ago? It took me this long to get it all together. Look, let's go back to my place. I got a great view of the ocean. It's not like that loft we used to live in. Peter, how long will it be before you get tired of me this time? Chili, men don't come with warranties. Look, I, I'm cold and I'm confused. I want to go home now. Okay. Alone. Okay. Come on, guys. We got ten minutes. Ten minutes. What's wedding? Oh, come on. Come on. The wedding. Perfect. Why 
Why didn't I think of that? Because you're crazy. That's why. Oh, it's all my fault, Daddy. Alvin, why couldn't you just say, Viola, I don't have any money? I just couldn't bring myself to say it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just that I wanted my daughter to be married like a princess. It's too bad. The king's in the dungeon. Oh, Alvin, what happened to all that wedding money? It just added up. A thousand dollars to the orthodontist, the new washer and dryer, repairs on the house. It just went. And I, I couldn't bring myself to tell you about it. I didn't make it any easier on you. I let the whole wedding get out of proportion. Oh, no, no, honey. I botched it all up. I botched up everything. I should have been happy just knowing you'd be there to give me away. Well... No one is going to botch it up this time. We are going on with this wedding, whether you are in jail or not. I love you, baby. I love you too, Daddy. I got a lawyer. Bell's all arranged. This way. When I motion to you, you'll come forward and face me. Now, this is what I call a class place for a wedding. Do I have time to get my wedding dress? I've got plenty of time. I can't get married in my own blue jeans. Why? It's something old and something blue at the same time. Now all we need is something borrowed. I sure tried. Dear friends, we are gathered here to unite in holy wedlock James Cutler and Dolores Andrews. Do you, Dolores, take James to be your lawful wedded husband, to love, honor, and cherish till death do you part? I do. So be it. Do you, James, take Dolores to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, honor, and cherish till death do you part? I do. So be it. I now pronounce you man and wife. Amen. James, you may kiss your breath. And so it is with this prayer that we commence the wedding of Thomas Burkhart and Julie Weston. Where is she? I don't know. I knew we should have rehearsed this part better. And let us pray. Will you please check the canapes, huh? They're almost ready. You know you're crazy. One minute the wedding is on, off, on, off, Will on. Will you just keep cooking, huh? I hope we can pull this off. Don't worry, we'll pull it off. And you keep stuffing those pheasants. We look like triplets. <laughs> I told you we had time for a Bloody Mary. Or two, or three. know where she is you have no idea no sir well do you think she'll be here soon I don't know I see this business gets rougher every year I don't know how I feel being in your custody I tell you you know, you can't even find the right room. Take it easy, Alvin. I just forget where Mr. Edwards said to go. I'm telling you, there is no reception. I couldn't come up with the money, so they canceled it. You cops are so dumb. 
Just follow me. Girls, you look just peachy. <laughs> oh, my heads are killing me. I'm hungry. Here she now. is. Come on, let's get ready. Oh. I'm glad you could make it. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. You could have fooled me. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Well, if you've quite finished. <laughs> yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to join these two young people, Jilly Weston and Thomas Burkhardt, in the bonds of holy matrimony. In these troubled times, it is comforting to see two people who are completely dedicated to each other and to the sacred union of marriage. Now, uh, Jilly Weston, do you take this man, Thomas Burkhardt, to be your lawfully wedded husband, to love and respect him, and to stay with him through happiness and misfortune. What? Oh, I do. I definitely do. Yes. And uh, do you, Thomas Burkhardt, take... I do. <laughs> well, then, may I please have the rings? Then I now pronounce you husband and wife. And you may kiss. <laughs> yes, you may kiss the bride. good care of me. I'm going to have to live a long life to pay this off. Excuse me. Oh, yes. Mr. and Mrs. Andrews, I'd like you to meet the Harrisons. Uh-huh. Nice Hello. meeting you. Hello. In a way, this is as much their reception as it is yours. Oh, yeah? Why? Well, I think I can explain that. Oh, great. Why don't you tell me about it over by the Swedish meatballs? Well, it's very simple. My daughter was about to be married, too, today. And there was some compromise. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, you're eating like a condemned man. Oh, look. Wow. This must have cost a million dollars. Jeez, a lot of stuff for so few people. Hi. Congratulations. Come on in and join the party. Well, thanks a lot. We've got guests waiting for us in the champagne room. That's all right. Bring them all down. We've got plenty. We're up to our ears in the pheasants. Thanks a lot. I'll uh, go round everybody up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
did it. Now I can relax. Don't get too comfortable. First thing tomorrow morning, the Fenwicks are coming in to look at the crystal room. But this place is going to be a wreck. That's right. And it's your job to see to it that when their daughter gets married, it looks just like this. Close your mouth. They're cutting the cake. I knew there was somebody we forgot to call. When you throw a party, you really throw a party. <laughs> 